Boom, boom, boom. That is just a good standby church hymn, isn't it? I love it. Thank you for being with us in prayer today, my friends. I'm Father Ron. Father Michael has our scripture reflection today, but we're here with the team, with all of you. Thank you for being here. This is the God Minute, Thursday of Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and, and my, my mouth, mouth shall, shall declare your, your praise. Psalm 19, The World's Glory The being and beauty of the universe declares the glory of God. No words are necessary. Contemplation of nature revives my soul. When I view this as an unspoken teaching, I am wise. When I align myself with love, my heart rejoices. This enlightenment is more to be desired than gold. It is sweeter than honey and my great reward. Cleanse me of my secret faults and presumptuous sins. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. There was a little boy who decided that he really wanted a new bicycle. I mean, he didn't want a hand-me-down from his brother or sister. He wanted his own, a brand new one. So he went to his mom and dad and he said, Mom, Dad, can I get a bicycle? And they said, well, no, we're just, we're just not in a place right now to buy you a new bicycle. So he waited a few months when it was just before his birthday and he went to his parents again and he said, Mom, Dad, how about a bicycle for my birthday? And they said, well, we'll see. And of course, his birthday came and went and no bicycle. So it came time for Christmas, and he thought, aha, I'll get my mom and dad. I'll get that bicycle. I'm going to ask Santa. So he says to Santa, Santa, can I get a bicycle for Christmas? And Santa says, well, have you been a good boy? And he said, yes, I, I think I have. He said, well, we'll see what I can do. Well, Christmas came, and once again, no bicycle. So he thought, desperate times call for desperate measures. So he one night went into his mom and dad's bedroom when they were fast asleep, and there was a beautiful statue of the Blessed Mother. And so he took it off their little nightstand, and he brought it into his room, and he placed it very gently and very carefully onto his bed. And there was a big blanket there, and he took the blanket and wrapped it around the statue. And then he took the statue and placed it in the very back part of the closet. And then he sat down at his little desk and took out a piece of paper and a pen. And he wrote, Dear God, if you ever want to see your mother again. I love that story. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And oftentimes, kids show us the way, don't they? But you know what? That's a cute story, but it says a lot to us about as adults as well, because we do the same thing. How many times have we found ourselves bargaining with the Lord for whatever it is that we want? Oh, Lord, I really want this. And if you, I get this, I'll do this and I'll do that. I'll say a novena. I'll pray the rosary. I'll go to mass an extra time during the week. 
St. Paul tells the Philippians and us today, look, don't be anxious about anything. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. When you go before God to pray, do you start out with thanksgiving? Do you start your prayer by saying, Lord, I'm grateful for the gifts that you've given me. Here's another that I have. I'm grateful for all the ways that you've blessed my life or how often I have been able to recognize you actively in my life. Now, Lord, this is something else I I believe I need. I believe this is something that, that would help me. I can't tell you the number of times people have come up to me and said, Father, I don't think the Lord is listening to me. I don't, I don't think he hears how I pray. How do you pray, Father? Because I know he listens to you. And I laugh because one of the things is, is that when people think or surmise that the Lord is uh, listening to me over them, uh, I, don't, I don't think that that's true. I, I mean, I know it's not true. I don't have any kind of magical power that when I go before the Lord, my prayer is stronger than someone else's. But I think it's the way we listen to the Lord's response. I had a kid come up to me one time and he goes, look, I've been praying and praying and praying and God has not answered my prayer. And I said, yes, he has. And he says, no, no, he he hasn't. I didn't get what I wanted. And I said, well, what you didn't get was the answer you wanted to your prayer. But God answered your prayer. It's just that his answer this time was no. It's hard for us to believe that sometimes God can say no. But there's a reason for that. It's because God has something better in mind for us. He has something more in store for us that's going to help us to be better. Who we are, what we are, what will be, that's when God's yes or no makes a difference. And it's up to us, if we start out with that attitude of gratitude, that thanksgiving, that when we go before the Lord with prayer or petition, in any situation, we're going to be stronger because we're going to be able to trust in the Lord and accept whatever answer he gives us, even if it's not the answer that we want. You know, there's many things in this world that cause us to be anxious about all kinds of stuff. But the more we can trust in the Lord, the more we can put our reliance in Him, well, then the better off you and I are going to be. May your day today be truly blessed. And let us lift our hearts in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, so much of my worry stems from a proud belief that I may know better than you what needs to happen. Teach me to cast my burdens upon you, leaving them to your power and wisdom. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And before we end, my friends, a couple of things I want to share with you really quickly. First, 
to all of you who contacted me about this social media person we're looking to hire, whether it was you yourself or someone you know, thank you. My deepest gratitude, I received so many emails from all of you, and I'm so grateful for that. So we're going to be going through those. Um, but just to say that there's no way I can personally respond back to all of you, but please know of my thankfulness for the concern and the support. It means everything. Thank you. Also, um, a number of you have asked about the app sometimes not working. And if you use our God Minute app for the podcast, or even just use the app itself for the reminders, Google and Apple both require that the user start the app, any app they use, every two weeks. So the app can only run in the background, which it's made to do, for two weeks, and then it will stop. You have to close the app out and then just tap it to reopen it, and it's good to go for another two weeks. It's a pain, I know, but it's something that they uh, put on there for privacy. So if it's not working, just close the app and then reload it, restart it again by tapping on it. Okay? So just so you know that. Finally, a lot of you have asked if we do the live streaming of Mass on the weekend, and we don't. We have our Mass, but it's not live streamed. That's just way too much, <laughs> way too much digital stuff, uh, technology. But let me share with you a place I did a mission a number of years ago, and they have the most beautiful celebrations of Eucharist, and it is live streamed during the week, but also, of course, on the weekend. And if you're interested, it's beautiful how they do the Mass and live stream. So it's stmonica.net, S-T-Monica, M-O-N-I-C-A, dot net, S-T-Monica, dot net. And right in the front, there's the live stream. You click on that, and, uh, and you can watch the Mass either on tape or live on Saturday nights or Sundays. Okay, so thank you for listening, praying today. Sorry I took up this time, but uh, you have a beautiful day. We'll be with you in prayer. We ask God's blessing, and we'll see you tomorrow.